Hi, so welcome to our introduction course to the Kangaroo component for Grasshopper. Like most other components, you can download it from uh, foodforrhino.com. It's free. And when you first install it, you'll get a tab added to your components in Grasshopper. Now, this lesson is going to be focused on Kangaroo 2, which is a relatively recent version, and it's actually quite different from 1 and much, much more straightforward. So I do recommend that if you have Kangaroo uh, 1, you upgrade to Kangaroo 2. So when you install it, you'll get this list of loads of different possible rules for how objects can behave, and this other smaller set of the actual physical engine. Now Kangaroo is called a, physical, a physics engine because what it's meant to do is simulate the behavior of elements through time. Now this means that it'll behave a bit differently from other grasshopper components. And usually if you've looked at uh, kangaroo videos online, it'll look uh, like a set of animations. You'll see objects developing, evolving, moving uh, through time. And that's because adding the element of time allows these different behavioral properties of objects to to evolve and eventually arrive at a at a design solution which works for us so for this lesson we're just going to see the very very basics of how this works and how we can move two points around and we can control the relationships between between those two points so like i said on this side you have the actual solvers or the engine and on this side, you have basically a toy chest full of different possible uh, rules or behaviors that you can give different objects. And, and really, the scope of this is amazing and insanely cool. You could spend ages uh, learning about each and every one of these. But the ones that we're going to focus on for this course are going to be some very, very simple ones. It's going to be applying a very simple force to a point it's going to be anchoring certain points so the unary force the anchor and finally the length which controls how close or far apart two different points want to be from each other and even though these are some of the most basic functions of these uh, among these different goals, you're, you'll actually be surprised by how much complexity we can get and how what, the interesting material systems and simulations that we can achieve with just these three. And uh, especially in an architecture uh, context, this is a really useful uh set of tools to create vaults or compression compression structure simulations or tensile structure simulations which we're going to do in this course so even though we're just focusing on these three uh, we're going to have quite a bit of fun with them now as i said the way that this works is that these goals give uh, specific behavioral properties to uh, geometry objects in this case points and lines so these work on points and these work on lines. So think of it in three stages. First, we need the actual uh, geometry or set of points that we're going to be working with. So we can just set up, let's set up a point here and bring this into Grasshopper. So now we have a basic point set up on this side, our different goals set that we're going to be working with on this stage. And finally, what we need is the engine that actually puts this together. Now that's uh, the solvers here with the little kangaroo on them. Now we have two options, a solver 
and a solver that's bouncing. Now these are two different ways of arriving at a solution. Uh, the solver is a bit less messy and the bouncy solver preserves more energy during movement so it creates effects like oscillations and arrives at, at a solution. It takes a bit longer but you can actually see how the physical system is working a bit better. So for this uh, for this stage we, act we, we want to use this bouncy solver because it'll let you see more clearly what's going on. Uh, the other one arrives at a solution much much faster. So you can see that this takes different inputs. The goal objects are going to come from here. So once you have, uh, say for example, I want to apply a force to a point. This component takes points and outputs uh, force goals for those points. So the way I would do this is I put this point into this input. You can set the direction that the force is applied. And once this comes out, this is what you plug into uh, the goal objects input for the solver. Now, the other thing that you need to get started is plugging something into this reset input. That tells it basically uh, whether to run the animation or to start it all over again. So when you click true, it's going to hold uh, the entire process at the start. So you can see our point here, it's static. And now each of these are going to have uh, different parameters that, are, that will control the way that these forces are applied. So for example, you can see that the default force applied to this, uh, to this point is in the z-axis. So looking at it from the top view here, we wouldn't see uh, any change because it's actually coming from uh, from the top. So let's just change that vector to a vector along the y. And say that we want it to move downward. So just give it a vector of magnitude negative 1 on the y. So now that's just one rule applied to one point. And we can maybe hide all of these. And when you click go, Maybe in this case, it's a bit fast. So you didn't really see that. If you saw the point fell really, really quickly downward. Now, this sort of fast motion is because it's not showing all the iterations in the, in the solution. It's only showing up every 10 iterations. Because we're doing something, when you're doing something more complex, you don't really care to see it, the, the whole system evolve very slowly. So you want to speed things up. Here, because we're actually starting, starting out, let's switch the number of iterations uh, that's going to show to one. So it's every, every single iteration is going to show. So click false, and you can see now that it's falling slower. Also, if we change this from negative 1 to negative 0.1 and the strength of the force applied to this is reduced, it slows down further. So go to 0 0.1 and it falls much more slowly. So what would we do, what would we do if we wanted to have this 
fall upwards, for example. We would switch this to, instead of negative 1, which is down, we just change this to a positive value, and that goes up. And so that's the very basics. Uh, you could, uh, instead of uh, giving it a vector on the y, you could give it a vector on the x, and it would fall to the side, and so on and so forth. Now before we keep going, I'll just mention that the geometry that's modified through this process is output uh, here. So points are output uh, in this V output and any other geometry will be found here on this O list. So for example, if I wanted to draw a sphere from this modified point, I would just take this here and it draws a sphere where the point is. And that sphere uses the geometry that's been modified by the kangaroo component. So that's one basic uh, force that's applied to one object. So let's try to work with two objects now, two points. We're just going to create another input. And if we just put these two points into and give those two points to this component, it'll create two forces on those points. And you probably guess what's going to happen now. Both of these will follow the same rule. Now, for example, if I want one of these to fall downward and the other one upward, I can create another one of these and give it two numbers, one for each point. And so the first point is going to follow this one, and the second point is going to follow this one. When I click Go, the two are behaving differently. So that's sort of how uh, applying forces works. You have a list of objects, which are points in this case, and you have a list of forces, and that's pretty straightforward. Now the next one of these which we're going to look at is the anchor. So the anchor works as a, as a basic rule. Whichever point is plugged into here will not move. So even though uh, any number of forces may be applied to this point, whichever point uh, comes here, so maybe it's the first point, it won't move. So now I click this. Oops. You actually have to plug this in as well to the goal objects. So now, and it the order really doesn't matter. So I could have uh, this one plugged in first and then this one plugged in after. It just flattens everything and and puts all of the forces together for all of the for all of the objects. So now that I have the anchor uh, functions working as well as the force functions, you can see that the one the point that I anchored isn't moving. Now you can actually apply a strength. Uh, value to this. So nothing will ever be 100% rigid. So you will find that this, that one of your points might be moving by a minuscule amount, almost as if it were, you know, held in place by a rubber band. And that's because the strength 
is actually working that way. And you can make it really, really strong by having a huge, huge number here, and the effect will be practically imperceptible. At the moment, it's not really affecting us, but uh, as we as we create more complex systems, you'll find that you probably have to modify this strength uh, parameter to make it make it a bit stronger and fix everything. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Uh, if I connect this other point, then it's the second point that stays fixed, even though the same forces are being applied to both of these. And of course, if I connect both of them, then nothing moves. Pretty simple. Now, I'm just connecting this one. Finally, you have this one, which is going to complete our little toy box for this course. Now this works in the following way. When you have a line connecting two points, that line can be told to want to reach a certain length. So if I, and this doesn't receive points, it receives, it, it, it takes lines. So there's one line in our system and I connect it to the input. And what it's asking for is a length. So this line wants to reach a certain length. So let's just try, uh, by default, it uh, if you don't provide any input, the line is going to just want to keep its current length. So why don't we first take the length of this line and multiply it by a factor. So if it's one, it'll want to remain its current length. If it's zero, it'll want to uh, go to zero. So we'll use this for the, the length. And uh, again, this has a strength parameter to it. And m most of these will have a strength parameter. So when you, when you start playing with, with these systems, you'll want some of these to be stronger than others, and we'll get to that. But always keep in mind that when things aren't uh, playing out the way that you thought they would, uh, try to tweak the, the relative strengths of each of these uh, forces that you're applying. So now say we forget about this one, the direct forces, and we just care about the anchors. Now, we can just leave this one connected, but leave it at zero so we can see the two points. So there it is, and also connect this one. And click Start. Now this is running, but because uh, there are no directional forces applied here, they're not going anywhere, uh, there's only one anchor, it's anchoring this, and this line is just told, uh, it's just being told to stay uh, the length that it was at the start. So nothing's changing. Now, if I change this, this will start to change in size, in length, sorry. Now, if I make this, sorry, maybe that's a bit out of camera. Say it's a maximum of three. Now this might look like a normal grasshopper slider the way that it's working here, but actually if you notice the way that it's moving, it's actually bouncing a bit because it's actually running the simulation. Now what's going to happen when we, so this point is fixed. This line is being told to 
uh, remain a certain factor of length. And once we introduce this downward force again, what we'll get, increase this again to uh, negative one, is a pendulum. So let's actually hide this. So once again, that's those three forces acting in unison. So once I start this again, and I can change this, it's still running the animation, but it's, uh, it's updating as it goes. Now, there's a certain level of interaction that can be achieved while the simulation is running. So for example, I was changing this slider, and while, the, uh, while this animation was running, the parameters were being updated. So, and that also works for a lot of other elements. So say, I'm running this, and I want to change which point is anchored. So, there it is. And it's changing that while the animation or the simulation is running. So you can see, that it's making updates within the physical system. Another very useful component for Kangaroo, going back to the little uh, tab with the different solvers, is the grab. So all you need to do is connect this to the gold and you probably want to make this really strong and what this allows you to do is while the simulation is running pressing alt will allow you to move a point so grab it and move it and I'm playing around with this and the animation is responding to the changes that I make so you could actually spend ages playing around with these uh, it's actually re a really really cool and and simple way to play around with with physics simulations and when you're done it's going and and this has reached a point of a point of stability where this isn't moving anymore you're probably going to want to output the result now uh, this isn't a pretty interest a very interesting result but when we're running more complex simulations in our later videos then eventually you're going to want to take this out and bake it and work on it uh, as part of a larger project. So, so that's very, the very basics of what it's a simulation or a, a physics engine that takes uh, geometry, which is here, and applies uh, behavioral goals or behavioral characteristics to that geometry, and then adds the element of time. So when you click go, all of these things start to interact and eventually uh, reach a different configuration and that is what you can then use to, to arrive at a, at a new design solution.